I'm Chris with uh, Whiskey Dents. That's my YouTube channel. And this is my project. It is a 66 F100 crew, co or crew cab uh, suicide door. I don't have the hinges done just yet, so I can't, uh, I can't show you how the doors work yet. But uh, in the near future, we'll get that taken care of. So the reason that I started this. I originally had a 66 crew cab and my son is 6'2", my daughter is 5'11", and they just wouldn't fit in the back. They, they're just too big and the doors are small, you couldn't get them all the way open. So I figured, why not just build one? So I started running up parts. I had three cabs, um, two parts pickups, uh, Crown Vic suspension, and I just started cutting and welding stuff together. It's sitting on a 2008 Crown Victoria suspension that I added 39 inches to, so it's stretched out, it's reinforced, um, it's also reinforced with the cab mouse themselves because I have a set in the front, middle, and rear. So the frame should be plenty stiff. Um, then Casey talked me into uh, putting it on air ride. So we pulled the front suspension out and uh, the rear springs and put the airbags in there. So now it, uh, it gets really low. So basically I started the YouTube channel because I'm tired of working for someone else and I thought maybe It'd be a chance for me to be my own boss, make my own hours. Well, it turns out that it's a lot more work. Um, it's a lot more work than I previously anticipated. For one, the amount of time that you have to spend moving cameras and editing, making sure the shot looks right. And there's so many different variables that uh, that I had no idea, you know, at all. So um, there was that, but. I mean, I'm starting to get the hang of it. I've been doing it for since the end of May. What else have we done? I put the fuel cell in it. So I got a 306 cylinder four speed out there. And that's gonna go in here. Um, the interior I'm gonna leave pretty much stock. I'll probably just put two bench seats in it and put covers on them. Um, it's got 355 gears in it. I think that with the four speed, I should be able to do 65. I mean, I don't know how much faster I want to go. So it's more about just cruising and looking cool. And I mean, this is just one of the steps, one of the building blocks or whatever, like for the channel. I plan on getting it finished and then um, selling it. I'm gonna enjoy it for probably a summer, but then, then it's probably gonna go bye-bye. There's so many other projects that I would like to uh, fund with the money, so. We'll see where it takes the channel. But, you know, originally I kind of started doing this so that it would give me something to do. And, you know, I thought it would be cool. But now that I'm starting to get a little bit of a fan base and I'm meeting cool people, and people are telling me that their children are really getting into the videos and they're telling me their names. And, you know, that kind of aspect, like, there's a. Uh, 15 year old kid and another 16 year old kid that are huge fans. So it's kind of like gravitating towards me, like maybe helping some of these, uh, these kids out with their channels and whatever else, you know, share what I've learned with them, you know, give them advice, you know, whatever, you know, just trying to help out. But ideally, when it all comes down to it, I would like to be self-sufficient. I don't want to work for anybody else. I just want to come out here and make videos, and that's it, you know, build cool stuff, hang out with all the awesome people that I've met, you know, doing this, you know, it just kind of makes sense to me, so. Um, these wheels, I really like the way they look, but they don't quite fit. I can't go lock to lock, the, the box rubs when you set it back down on top of it, they're just a little bit too wide, so. I could either get different wheels, which I'll probably just run the stock Crown Victorias and then get some type of a hubcap, you know, like a half moon or, you know, something along those lines. 
I think those look really nice on here. Or I could get uh, an older Crown Vic rear suspension that's a little bit narrower. I'm trying to get this done by the middle of May so that we can all drive down to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee for the F100 Nationals. So we'll see. Right now, the biggest thing is uh, being able to afford all the parts that I'm going to need. You start thinking I need fuel lines, brake lines, and you know, this, that, and the other thing, and a windshield, and I'm going to need door seals, and you know, all this other stuff. It just starts adding up pretty quick. So we got a really good shot at making it. I think we're going to. So keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully, we're all driving down together. I don't know if Casey's going to have his done. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Dave over at Classic Car Revivals, he'll definitely have his done. He's got more free time than, than he knows what to do with. So. But anyways, um, I don't know if you guys want to take like, a little walk around. I kind of show you uh, what I've gotten done so far. You get a better look at uh, what we got here. All right, so this started out as one cab as well as this. So I basically cut them in half and I slid them together, and then this piece itself is from another cab. The reason I did that is because this window or door would have the wing window on it, like this does, and I didn't like that look. So what I did was just cut two doors in half and uh, slapped them together. I still need to do quite a bit of fabrication, but as you can see, my, uh, my body lines and door gap, panel gaps, are all really close. I'm really pleased with that aspect. Plan is that I'm gonna put my hinges, let's just pop this door off. Right now, all the, all the hardware is still here so that uh, the door is sitting there, right? So, with my frame being this wide, we needed to cut some of these, uh, these pockets out. And then, I made the mistake of cutting this out because I was going to put the hinge pockets inside of here, but then uh, after seeing a few other people and the way that they had done it, I had changed my mind. So I'm still gonna, I'm gonna cut a hole here and here and I'm gonna build my brackets for my hinges inside there. I'm using stock hinges. And then if we go to the inside of the door, I'm gonna cut boxes out right here and down here and reinforce it so that I have something for my hinge to bolt to. Um, you know, like on the stock style, they'll slide in, slide in here and here, and they're pretty hidden. But the problem with that is if I try to hide these hinges in here, I'm not gonna be able to get a piece of glass in here because the window itself is so big. And I mean, realistically, I'm gonna struggle with, uh, door cranks and whatever else so this may be some type of a dummy window till i get it figured out so that we can uh so we can cruise with it but uh yeah, i don't know so the people that are sitting in the back uh, they uh might not be too comfortable for them you know but uh what do you do if you don't want to ride don't ride anyways so Crownback suspension. The box itself doesn't fit over the suspension, so you need to cut out the center section. So I did that, and I figured I might as well put this fuel cell here. So I cut a little bit more of the box out. Um, I talked to Casey about this earlier. We're gonna do a floor that comes up. You know, I might have some, you know, a little bit of room here, but. Overall, the floor will just be covering all of this. You won't be able to see any of the air ride, uh, the compressor, or tank, or any of that other stuff. So, um, back here, I'm not running the tailgate. This is literally a piece of sheet metal that I ordered out of a place in California. So, it was actually a really good fit. I still need to finish welding. You know, I filled in stake pockets. This box used to be a long box. It's now shortened to factory specs for uh, short wheelbase Fords. Uh, what else? As you can see, you know, there's still a lot of body work that needs to get done. I made my own 
floor here. This was all wide open, and now I think it's 14 and a half inches. So a guy with a decent sized foot or boot or whatever, you know, it's not gonna have any problems. You can put your foot up here. Um, this also retained our factory mounting locations for all of our seats. So I can run a bench seat here and as well as there. Um, I'm gonna put a stereo in it. I'll probably just put a couple of 12s in the back seat um, behind it. And then these doors have these pockets right here. I'll probably put some type of a speaker or something in there and some sound deadening. Um, for our door wells, being that I had to notch all of them out so that it would sit down on the frame and sit a little bit lower, I have to, I have to make uh, some sheet metal to cover that up. So I need to modify this just a little bit, but I'll weld that in so it'll look like that one. And once we get it all painted and get some carpet in here, it, uh, it's not going to look too bad. Uh, what else? It'll be a four speed bench seats like I had mentioned earlier. I'll probably just mount a CD player of some sort. I, I don't even know what kind of stereos they have anymore nowadays. But stock wheel, stock, stock everything. I'm going to tint the windows as dark as I can possibly get them. Uh, Stock six cylinder, you know, we're not trying to break any uh, land speed records. Oh, it's coming together pretty well. I still need to bend some sheet metal here because if you notice, this cab was the newer style. So there'll be a seam right here. And then when you get to the back, this one doesn't. This is an older style. I know a lot of these guys think that the F100s were all the same, but they're definitely not. Like. The doors, the steps are different from the 65, 66 compared to the first generation. The tops are different. Um, the hinges are different on the older style for your doors. I mean, there's like subtle differences everywhere, but uh, they're definitely different, you know, enough to cause a bit of a headache. But anyways, so yeah, this is, uh, you can see this just a little bit better. This is, I saved this whole piece off of a cab so that all these body lines look exactly the same. And then I just have to add this piece in. So um, the regular, the factory crew cabs, the drip rail goes front to back. But I didn't really like the way it looked. So I just saved what I could and then I'll leave this center section open. I mean, it's gonna function. It'll do what it needs to do. Uh, let's see, what else? I think that I'll probably get rid of these lights up here. If it was a bigger truck, four wheel drive or something, I would probably leave them on there, but uh, I'll be honest with you. I like the way they look, but it's just not right for here. This cab had the gigantic Western style mirrors on it, and I don't like that. So I thought about doing like maybe like a Euro style or whatever it is where they put the mirrors up here on the fenders. Just, I'm just trying to be a little bit different. Um, right now I got a custom, custom grill in it that uh, I was gonna use for another project. So I'm gonna pull all that off. Everybody's, nobody likes this. They're all like, well, what are you gonna do with the grill? Well, it's gonna be a 66 grill. Uh, I'll probably go with the factory style headlights as well. I like the halo look, but uh, I kind of want this to look like it actually came from the 60s, not like somebody made it in 2023 and 24. So, but uh, yeah, should we pop the hood and get a look at uh, what the suspension looks like? The lighting may not be very well. I don't know if you can see down in there, but she is really sitting low. The kit for the air suspension for the front was from uh, Max Speeding Rods. And if we're being completely honest, it didn't fit very well. I had to modify it quite a bit. Now that I know how to modify it, I would definitely buy the kit again. Because the modification part was put it in there, take it out, put it in there, take it out, and you'd have to keep removing material. 
Well, it was kind of a pain in the butt to get it uh, in and out of there. So, but now that I know how to do it, I, I would, I would definitely do it again. The rear was a kit that I ordered off of eBay and just uh, pieced together myself. Um, I think all together, I may have six hundred and fifty dollars in the air ride. Um, Casey has suggested maybe running two compressors, but being that I'm running the quarter inch lines, it's going to go up slow, it's going to go down slow. I mean, that's just all there is to it. I should have went big, two compressors, bigger tank, bigger lines, then you can raise and lower almost like hydraulics, maybe even faster, I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not really too... Uh, too into the hydraulic stuff, but uh, I mean, everybody's airbagging stuff, so why not get low on me, you know? It looks cool, it's cheap, and uh, it's something I've never uh, never really messed with, so it was kind of exciting to me, and uh, I don't know, I, I really enjoyed it. I'm probably going to start doing every single project on Air Ride, to be honest with you. I mean, why not? So, um, the only other thing I need to do is I need to put some shorter shocks in the back and then I'll have to make my own mounting brackets for the front because originally it was a coil over a shock and if you got the money you can go to Viking and get an airbag over coil or coil, coil over airbag set up to where you wouldn't have to modify anything you just bolt it right in but uh, they're also $1,500 and I think I might be into this thing $2,500 all all in right now so that wasn't in the budget you know if i had plans on keeping it maybe i could see myself doing that but, uh, i don't know so that's where we're that's where we're at so far i would really wanted to go with some 20 inch wheels or 22s even but uh with the crown vic suspension chassis it uh, it really limits your options to width and size but, I mean, there are guys out there that can do it, but uh, you're spending a fortune trying to get there. So, at this point in the game, it just really wasn't worth it for me. But. Okay, so, little known fact. I may have said it once upon a time in a video. But, uh, so, me and my dad are driving, and I see this old 66 Ford sitting on the side of the road. And it was $500. And growing up, you know, my parents didn't have a whole lot of money. So, I mean, $500 was a lot, but uh, I told him, man, I'd really like to have that. And about a week later, I'm at my job, and I hear the door open, and I'm looking around, and I don't see anybody. And then I hear something slide across the floor and hit me in the foot. And what is it? It's a, uh, a 66 Ford key with a Cobra emblem on it. And immediately... I knew what it was. By the time I got it snatched up and I was standing up, my parents were both standing there smiling, and they made me the happiest kid. Like, <laughs> you just wouldn't believe it. So, let's fast forward about, I don't know, three or four years later. I drove it off and on. I absolutely loved it. Um, it would only do about 100 miles an hour. So it was 100 miles an hour everywhere. And uh, I grew up in a small town, so there was no sheriff or cop or anything like that. So realistically, I was probably putting tires on it every other weekend because we would do reverse drops and burnouts and everything else right on Main Street. And uh, by the time, you know, you usually had about a half an hour before the cops showed up. So that was plenty of time to get home, you know, go hide or do whatever you were doing. So a few years later, joined the Navy. My brother David starts driving my truck. He put like three or four transmissions in it, painted it a different color. After that, I got out and he actually had it crushed. He sold it to a junkyard for like, I don't know, it was probably back in like uh, 2000. So he probably got 50 bucks for my original pickup that's no longer with us, unfortunately. You know, I, I've always loved these pickups and you know, my brother at Classic Car Revivals, he, he's always had a bunch of them. And I don't know, just seeing all of his pickups and stuff just kind of lit a fire 
that uh, I just had to have another one. So that's when I got my original crew cab. And I had it for a while and then um, we got put in a situation where we needed to come up with some money to buy our house. So I ended up selling it for the down payment and I did really well on it. Let's just put it that way. But uh, so yeah, then it was time to build one. Um, I got one sitting outside back in 2011. My wife bought it for me as a wedding gift. So I've really been kind of hooked. I mean, realistically, you could probably blame her for this, uh, this obsession that I've had for so long now. So at least, you know, in the, the adult portion of my life. So right now that's all tore apart. <laughs> this is actually the box for it. Um, the hood is all off of that one. It's sitting on a 98 Crown, uh, I'm sorry, it's sitting on a 98 Mercury Mountaineer, all wheel drive, 302, you know, I'm gonna eventually, hopefully next winter, I get that thrown back together so I can start driving it, so. Um, I think that's about it. I'd really like to thank Casey for stopping over and giving me a chance to uh, do his uh, shop talk. I think this is episode three. If you guys haven't seen the first two, they're about motorcycles. And, well, let's be honest. I'm not really a huge motorcycle guy, but the people that he interviewed are interesting. So even if you don't like motorcycle content, you may just like the fact that the guys are kind of characters and they got stories. And, you know, it's like talking to an old timer. Like they always got something fun to talk about. And they always got good stories. You know, it's something like, you know, people gravitate towards, you know. So check out his other episodes and check out my channel, Whiskey Dance, and uh, my brother, Classic Car Revivals. I don't know. I think that's about it. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, I look forward to being on a couple of other episodes come springtime when we're driving down to Pigeon Forge. So, thanks a lot for tuning in. See you guys next time.